The Rebound Rewind Power Tower is back and today we are ranking every NBA team's all-time duo from worst to best. Now before we begin, I want to make it clear that this is not a simple top 30 duos list. Because if it were, then the Lakers would hog up a bunch of spots. In this list, only one team can represent one duo. Let's find out who's at the bottom floor and who's all the way at the top. This is going to be quite a long video, so I suggest you get a good meal in to enjoy the programming. I highly recommend you find such meals with HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Count on HelloFresh to make some home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. With 50 weekly options, including a rotating selection of items at HelloFresh Market, there are plenty of delish dishes to choose from no matter the occasion. HelloFresh offers so many recipes to choose from each week, so you'll never end up in a recipe rut. HelloFresh has options for everyone, including family-friendly, fit and wholesome, and quick and easy meals. So there's something to please even the pickiest eater at your table. HelloFresh recipes feature produce sourced directly from U.S. farmers and picked at peak ripeness. It goes from the farm to your front door in under a week, which means their spring menu features the season's freshest flavors. HelloFresh offers veggie, pescatarian, and fit and wholesome meals to make it easy to stick to your goals. They sent me amazing meals such as the spicy Peruvian chicken and griddled onion cheeseburgers with easy to follow instructions on how to make each meal. To try HelloFresh, click my custom link in the description or pinned comment down below and use my custom code for 70% off plus free shipping on your first box. Thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring today's video. At the lobby of the Power Tower, we have the Charlotte Hornets with Alonzo Mourning and Larry Johnson. Alonzo and Larry individually are great players. As a duo, they were a solid duo who spent three seasons together averaging 40.8 points per game as a duo. For two of those seasons, they each made two All-Star games and played two playoffs together, but they never got past the second round as a duo. And if LaMelo Ball spends his prime in Charlotte, it is possible he and maybe Terry or a future draft pick can overtake this duo one day. In 29th place, we have the Grizzlies with John Morant and Desmond Bain. Now you could put Marcus All and Zach Randolph here if you wanted to make a season spent together argument, but would you rather have quantity of seasons or quality of seasons? And by that, I think Ja already in his four seasons has proven himself to play at an MVP level and play at a franchise player level, regardless if he's won the trophy yet or not. Whereas Mark and Zach are nice all-star pieces, but they aren't franchise level all-stars. I know Mark and Zach made the Western Conference Finals in 2013, but they didn't win that finals. If they were Western Conference champions, then you would have an accomplishment worthy of toppling Ja's spectacular career so far. But as a duo, John Desmond led the Grizzlies to be second in the West. Zach and Mark's best seed was fourth in the West. Now as for why John Desmond are ranked so low, this is their third season together. Later in the future, this duo should be ranked higher. In 28th place, we have the Kings with Chris Webber and Peza Stojakovic. Now, the 1951 Rochester Royals did have four All-Stars on their roster, being Arnie Risen, Bob Davies, Jack Coleman, and Bobby Wanzer. These are four basketball legends, but picking a duo out of them will be difficult considering this was before the shot clock era of 1954. So teams with a small lead could just hold the ball for as long as possible and force a foul to get easy free throws and milk out the clock to win the game. Chris and Peza played in a much tougher era, and while they didn't win a title like the 1951 Royals, they were pretty close in 2002, taking Kobe and Prime Shaq to a tough seven games. This duo made six consecutive playoff trips, and if they somehow did make the finals or won a chip, I would have ranked them higher. In 27th place, we have the Pelicans slash New Orleans Hornets with Chris Paul and David West. These two spent six seasons together and averaged a combined 37.9 points per game. Chris made four all-star teams and David made two all-star teams during their time together. Their deepest playoff run was in the 2008 Western Conference semifinals against the Spurs, but they lost in a tough seven games. Had they gone to the finals, played more seasons together, or won a ring, I would have definitely ranked this duo higher. In 26th place, we have the Timberwolves with Kevin Garnett and Sam Cassell. Now in the near future, I can easily see Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Anthony Towns overtake this duo, considering KG and Sam only played two seasons together from 2003 to 2005, and technically they did win a chip in 08 on the Celtics, though that doesn't count for this Wolves ranking. However, in that 03-04 season, that was KG's MVP season, 
and that's the main driver for putting this duo above Anthony and Cat. Also, Sam made his only all-star team during that same season, so you have an all-star and an MVP as a duo. I'll take that over an all-star and an all-rookie player, but I do think in the near future, Cat and Ant-Man overtake this duo with all the years they should spend together and potentially have deep playoff success if all things work out well. In 25th place, we have the Nuggets with Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray. Now, from an on-paper talent sense, you could make a great argument to rank this duo higher, as this duo does have a back-to-back -back MVP, but from an all-time accomplishment perspective, this duo needs more seasons together and potentially far more playoff runs together. Their deepest run so far was to the Western Conference Finals in 2020. They did get beat in five games, but I do think we see Nikola and Murray in the finals or even as champs in the future, if all things work out well. Until then, it's hard to rank them higher. In 24th place, we have the Pacers with Reggie Miller and Dale Davis. This duo played nine seasons together and made it to the finals in the year 2000. Reggie made four all-star teams during this time and Dale made one all-star team. Now, you could make an argument to have Rick Smith instead of Dale Davis, but during that title run year, Dale did make the all-star team while Rick made it in 1998. If this duo actually won a chip together, I would have ranked them higher. Ranked at 23rd place is the Los Angeles Clippers with Chris Paul and Blake Griffin. Now, by the end of the season, you you could possibly see the best Clippers duo being Paul George and Kawhi Leonard, but so far, that Clippers duo has had a bumpy ride with injuries, but the future does look pretty bright if all things work out. As for Chris and Blake, they were the driving force behind Lob City. Chris Paul led the league in assists two times while playing for the Clippers, and many of those assists were alley-oop connections to Blake Griffin. If this duo made it to the finals and even won a ring, they would have easily been ranked higher. Coming in 22nd place, we have the New Jersey Nets with Jason Kidd and Vince Carter. Now, in the near future, this could be Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant if they decide to make it further into the playoffs instead of getting swept in the first round. On paper, I would take Kyrie and Kevin over this duo, but so far in terms of what actually happened on the court, Jason and Vince accomplished more. As they spent roughly four seasons together, depending if you want to count their traded seasons or not, they made multiple postseason runs, their deepest being the Eastern Conference semifinals. Ranking in 21st place, we have the Suns. Now, the Suns have a ton of good choices for best all-time duo, from Charles Barkley and Kevin Johnson to Chris Paul and Devin Booker. But my pick here is Steve Nash and Amari Stoudemire. And while this duo didn't make the finals like the other two duos did, this duo did spend six seasons together, whereas, say, Charles and Kevin only spent four seasons together, and Chris and Devin only played two, technically three so far, Charles did win his MVP with the Suns, but Steve won two MVPs with the Suns. Also, the fit between these two, being Steve Nash and Amari Stoudemire, were a nearly perfect fit. Steve's playmaking and Stoudemire's athletic ability went hand in hand. Their deepest playoff run was to the Western Finals, and yeah, they did face prime Kobe Bryant, so you kind of already know how that one ended. They did not win. In 20th place, we have the Orlando Magic with Shaquille O'Neal and Penny Hardaway. This duo only spent three seasons together and they did not win a championship, which is their biggest drawback for being ranked so low. But on the positive side, you do get one of, if not the most dominant version of Shaq, statistically speaking. While I think Lakers Shaq ranks higher all time in terms of total accomplishment, from a physical perspective, you are getting the best physical version of Shaq. You're also getting Penny at his career peak before his major injuries. In that 94-95 season, this duo beat prime Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen in a tough six games, and made it all the way to the finals. Shaq was only 22 at the time, and Penny was 23. Shaq made three All-Star games during this time, and Penny made two. This duo averaged 48.1 points per game. In that 94-95 season, they averaged over 50 points per game. This was the number one team in the East, and number three in the NBA at the time. Coming in 19th place, we have the Oklahoma City Thunder with Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook. Now, I know this duo did not win a ring, but they did make it to the NBA Finals at such a young age, and Kevin Durant won an MVP in 2014, having one of the best seasons of his career, as he also won a scoring title averaging 32 points per game. He even made the 50-40-90 club in the 2012-13 season, going 50% from the field, 40% from three, and 90% from the line. They played eight seasons together, KD made seven all-star teams, and Russ made five while playing in this duo. Russ also won his own scoring title in 2015 while playing with Durant. They were both 23 years old when they made it to the NBA Finals, which is extremely impressive. While they didn't win, they did beat a really tough spot.
Spurs team with a prime Tim Duncan, Manny Ginobili, and Tony Parker during the Western Finals, plus an up-and-coming Kawhi Leonard, if this duo did win a ring, I would have ranked them higher. I already have them ranked above a lot of great duos below, so I don't think this is a terribly bad ranking. Overall, they did average 49.9 points per game together, and in their best season, they averaged 53.5 points per game together. In 18th place, we have the first championship duo on the list, and that's the Atlanta Hawks with Bob Pettit and Cliff Hagen. This duo played together from 1956 to 1965. Bob made 10 all-star teams during this time frame, and Cliff made 5. They won a championship together in 1958, beating the Boston Celtics. Maybe in the future, Trey Young and DeJounte Murray can take over this duo, but until then, this is the duo that remains for the Hawks. In 17th place is the Portland Trailblazers with Bill Walton and Maurice Lucas. As a duo, they played together in Portland for two seasons and won a championship together in the 1976-77 season. Bill himself won an MVP in the 1977-78 season, and had this duo played together for longer, I would have ranked them higher. But in general, these two are both heavily talented players, and Maurice Lucas himself is a five-time All-Star all-NBA player and two-time All-Defensive player. Rest in peace to Maurice Lucas. In 16th place, we have the Raptors with Kawhi Leonard and Kyle Lowry. Now, I know this duo only spent one season together, and many duos ranked below them got taxed for spending such a short amount of time together, but I think in this one specific scenario, there is something special and impressive about going one for one and winning it all in just one try. Heck, if this duo didn't win a chip, I would have easily swapped this duo out with many other great Raptors duos. This duo averaged roughly 41 points per game, both made the All-Star team, and of course they won a title beating the 2019 Golden State Warriors. And yes, the Warriors did have some injury issues and finals fatigue, but this is still an all-time great team they beat. Beating them in any circumstance is no easy task. In 15th place, right in the middle, we have the Washington Wizards slash Bullets with Wes Unseld and Alvin Hayes. This duo spent nine seasons together from 1972 to 1981, and they won a ring together in 1978. Wes himself was the finals MVP of that season, but he also was an MVP during during his rookie season in 1969. Though statistically speaking, Wes's best seasons were his first four years without the Big E. It's where he made most of his All-Star games, scored most of his points, and even got most rebounds per game. He only made two All-Star teams during his time with Hayes, but I think it's because they play similar positions and game styles. They are both rebounding, rim-protecting big men, and Hayes made eight All-Star teams while playing with Wes, though they're both great NBA talents. Rest in peace to Wes Unseld. Ranking in 14th place, we have the Dallas Mavericks with Dirk Nowitzki and Jason, but the question is which Jason, Terry or Kidd? Now you can arguably swap out Jason Terry with Kidd, but Terry spent more total seasons and more consecutive seasons than Kidd did. Kidd spent a total of 7 seasons on a split two completely different points of his career. Terry spent 8 seasons with Dirk in a row during his prime, and for that I am taking Jason Terry. In this 8 season stretch, Jason was the 08-09 6th man of the year, Dirk made 8 consecutive All-Star games, won MVP in 2007, and this duo won one of the most difficult and important rings in NBA history. They beat a super team, beating prime LeBron James and the Miami Heat's Big 3 in 2011 in a tough 6 games. In 13th place, we have the Houston Rockets with Akeem Olajuwon and Clyde Drexler. Now this duo played just 3.5, technically 4 seasons together, but they've done so much and so little. Clyde made 2 All-Star teams, Akeem made 3 All-Star teams, and just came off of his Defensive Player of the Year and MVP season right before Clyde showed up to H-Town. They won a ring together in 95, sweeping the Orlando Magic. While Dirk probably beat a tougher finals team, the Rockets were the tougher team to beat, so I can't take credit away from this duo doing what they were supposed to do and sweeping their finals opponent. Plus, Shaq and Penny is nothing to scoff at. Sweeping that duo still took a lot of talent and skill. In 12th place, we have the Knicks with Willis Reed and Walt Frazier. This duo played seven seasons together from the years 1967 to 1974, and they won two rings together. Walt made five All-Star teams during this time, and Reed made four All-Star teams during this time and also won an MVP. This duo averaged 38 points per game together, and Willis himself won two Finals MVPs during this time period. I would rank this duo higher, but the competition moving forward is insanely tough. In 11th place, we have the Bucks. Now, this is a tough call between young Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and an old Oscar Robertson versus a prime Giannis and a prime Chris Middleton. While individually you could rank Bucks Kareem over Bucks Giannis for now, Oscar Robertson was clearly at the back end of his prime, if not completely out of his prime, by the later course of this Bucks run. Chris and Giannis are both in their peak prime and are still adding to their resume. So far, Giannis has two MVPs, a Defensive Player of the Year, six-time All-Star selection, six-time All-NBA selections, a ring, and a Finals 
Finals MVP. Chris so far has three All-Star selections, a ring, and this duo averaged 48.5 points per game in their championship season. I know the Knicks duo has two rings compared to this Bucks one duo ring, but I think the fact that the Bucks have a two-time MVP and a strong opportunity to keep adding to their resume, plus from a fit and talent perspective, while you can argue Walt over Chris, Giannis is clearly the best player out of all four players, which is why I rank the Bucks above the Knicks, and I'm taking this current duo above Kareem and Oscar because I think they're both in their prime, versus in the other duo, only one is truly in their prime. And now we enter that top 10, and in 10th place, we have the 76ers with Dr. J and Moses Malone, while Wilt Chamberlain and Hal Greer make a close second. As far as total duos go, I think we gotta give this one to Julius Irving and Moses. Individually, you could rank Wilt over all the 76ers listed here, but as a combined duo, Dr. J and Moses has done so much more in four seasons playing together. Firstly, they've been to the NBA Finals in just their first season, and they won it all in that very same season. Beating the Showtime Lakers, one of the toughest teams in NBA history, but not only beating them, they swept them. Moses won an MVP in 1983 as well, and a Finals MVP in 83. And while Dr. J won his MVP in 81, he was still playing at his MVP level during his time with Moses. They made four all-star teams and averaged 45.2 points per game together, which for the 80s is pretty high. Rest in peace to the legendary Moses Malone, Will Chamberlain, and Hal Greer. In ninth place, we have the Detroit Pistons with Isaiah Thomas and Joe Dumars. This is one of the rare duos who won two chips together, but each winning their own finals MVP with each prospective chip, truly showing how balanced this duo is. They played together for roughly nine years, from 1985 to 1994, and they won back to back NBA titles in 89 and 1990. They have been to the finals three times, losing to the Showtime Lakers in 88, beating the Showtime Lakers in 89, and beating the Blazers in 1990. This duo fits so well because their games complemented each other so much. Thomas was an all-time great facilitator, and Dumars was an all-time great defender, while also being a great scorer so he can help take off some of the offensive pressure from Thomas if need be. In 8th place, we have the highest ranked duo that has not won a championship, and that's the Jazz with John Stockton and Karl Malone. Sure, this duo did not win a title, but they have been to two NBA Finals, they just ran into prime Michael Jordan twice, so that explains the lack of rings. Stockton and Malone combined for 25 All-NBA selections, 24 All-Star games, and 9 All-Defensive teams. Stockton leads the NBA in all-time assists with a total of 15,806 assists. Who do you think most of those assists were passed to? That's right, it was the mailman Carl Malone. Carl also won two MVPs, and these two made the playoffs for every single season they spent together. That is a crazy accomplishment. John has an insanely long playoff streak from his rookie season in 1984 to 85 to his final season in 2003. What ranks this duo so high is the absolute longevity they had together and how well they played off each other. I don't think you have MVP Carl Malone without all-star John Stockton and vice versa. In 7th place, we have the Cleveland Cavaliers with LeBron James and Kyrie Irving. While this duo only won one ring together, they have been to three straight finals together from 2015, 2016, and 2017. They have the second greatest player of all time with prime LeBron James and one of the best ball handlers the game has ever seen with Kyrie Irving. They won a 2016 chip, beating the team with the best record in NBA history being the 73-9 Warriors, and they came back from being down 3-1. Also, had Kyrie not injured his knee in 2015 in Game 1 of that Finals, I think the Cavs would have had a great shot at winning that series. Regardless, this duo worked so well as LeBron is a great playmaker and willing passer and Kyrie is such a gifted finisher and scorer. In 6th place, we have the Golden State Warriors with Steph Curry and Klay Thompson. Now, from a pure talent perspective, you could technically put Steph Curry and Kevin Durant, but from an all-time accomplishment perspective, what Steph and Klay did was far more accomplishing for the Warriors than what KD and Steph did in a quick two years. Steph and Klay have won four championships together, and Curry has two MVPs while playing alongside Klay. And this is just so far, these two can add more in the future. In fifth place, we have the Boston Celtics. Choosing the Celtics duo is a close call between Larry Bird and Kevin McHale versus Bill Russell and Bob Cousy. 
you can make an argument that Larry is the best Celtic all time, but from a duo perspective, both Bill and Bob are MVPs and won MVPs while playing together. They also have six rings together. This is the only duo in NBA history so far where they both won MVPs playing for the same team and have a total of six rings together. There's duos that accomplished one of these things, but neither have accomplished both. This is something we may never see again in NBA history. Rest in peace to the legendary Bill Russell. In fourth place, we have the San Antonio Spurs with Tim Duncan and Tony Parker. This duo won four rings together and they have been to five finals together as a duo. They won together in the years 2003, 2005, 2007, and 2014. Tim won MVPs during the years 2002 and 2003 back to back. Tony is a four-time All-NBA, six-time All-Star, and a Finals MVP during his time. Duncan during this time is a 12-time All-Star and made about a dozen All-NBA and All-Defensive teams. He also won a Finals MVP in 2003 and 2005. I would rank this duo higher, but the competition moving forward is getting insanely talented. In third place, we have the Miami Heat with LeBron James and Dwayne Wade. This duo went to four straight finals, won two finals in a row, has a back-to-back -back MVP in LeBron James, and arguably the best version of LeBron during his 2013 Heat season. D. Wade is still in his prime, but arguably the back end of his prime, not peak prime for sure, and he probably slipped out of his prime by the end of this duo's reign together. While their ring total isn't that high, the talent is because you got some of the greatest two-way players on the same team, both offensive and defensive nightmares that play and mesh well together. In second place, we have the Lakers. The hardest part about the Lakers is not ranking them second. I think they would rank second no matter what. The hardest part is choosing between Kobe and Shaq versus Magic and Kareem. I think the biggest difference between these two is the time spent together. Kobe and Shaq played eight seasons together and won three rings, plus Shaq got an MVP. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Magic Johnson played 10 seasons together. They advanced to the finals in eight of those seasons and won five championships between 1980 and 1988. They both also won MVPs while playing together, whereas Kobe won his MVP playing alone. If Kobe and Shaq spent their entire careers together, they probably would have been the greatest duo in sports history. Rest in peace to the legendary Kobe Bryant. In first place, hopefully to no one's surprise, we have the Chicago Bulls with Michael Jordan and Scottie Pippen. This duo won six rings together and they have the go to the sport in MJ, plus they three-peat it twice. No explanation needed as to why this two-way great duo gets first place. So here is every NBA team's best duo ranked from worst to best. Let me know what you think of this list and what you want to see in the future. Don't forget to dunk on that like button and subscribe with notifications turned on. I'm Rebound Rewind and I'll fast forward to you later.